How's it going, everyone? This is Mike. I'm back for another episode of Movies from A to Z, and I'm two days late, so I apologize to my uh, my fellow A to Z guys, James and Ian. So uh, we're up to letter F, and I've chosen to go back to 1942, the classic era of MGM musicals, for this film called For Me and My Gal, which is a really good dramatic musical directed by Busby Berkeley, starring Judy Garland, headlined... Her very first really adult role. Judy Garland had been under contract to MGM since 1935. She always sort of played the girl next door and uh, the juvenile with, in films with Mickey Rooney and things like that. But they finally gave her a chance to play a grown-up. and She was only 19 years old. She's perfect in the film. And uh, Gene Kelly, in his very first film, he had been a, a big success on Broadway in, in a couple of things. Uh, the, the last thing was Pal Joey. Got a lot of a uh, lot of uh, positive reaction for that. He also choreographed the the um, Broadway musical Best Foot Forward, and then he was offered a contract from David O. Selznick, and uh, David O. Selznick had nothing for him to do, so MGM wanted him for this film, so they bought his contract from Selznick, and this was the beginning of his film career. And uh, the third star headliner in this film is George Murphy, who had been around at MGM for quite a while, a great dancer, had worked with Judy Garland before in, um, what did he work with her in? Oh my God, Little Nelly Kelly, and I think there might have been something else as well, I'm not sure. But yeah, uh, George Murphy, another good dancer during that era. So it's about these vaudeville performers back in the 1910s, right about the time when World War I is about to break out. And it's filled with music from that era. The list of songs is pretty incredible. We've got songs like uh, the, the title tune, of course, and Oh You Beautiful Doll, When You Wore a Tulip and I Wore a Big Red Rose. You remember that one, don't you? Uh, Ball on the Jack, which is the best... The best singing and dancing performance in, in the uh, film, uh, After You've Gone, which is a great torch song that Judy sings, uh, Till We Meet Again. And then they do portions of some of these these patriotic songs when they get into the section where they're they're showing a lot of things happening during the war. Uh, did I say World War II? I meant World War I. I think I said World War II. Sorry. By the Beautiful Sea, uh, There's a Long, Long Trail, How Are You Going to Keep Him Down on the Farm?, it's a long way to Tipperary. Uh, when Johnny comes marching home again, Judy sings that and pack up your troubles in an old kit bag. So it's all very patriotic. Of course, this musical was being done uh, at the time when the United States was just entering World War II. And the studios were all doing their, part, their parts to encourage people to support the war and, and inspire patriotism. So this was this had an ambiance of World War I, but it was encouraging people to get excited about World War II. So anyway, so Judy Garland plays a, a young singer and dancer named Joe Hayden. And she is in, she is in an act with two comedians, uh, Jimmy Metcalf, played by George Murphy, and uh, Sid Sims, played by comedian Ben Blue. And uh, she... she she doesn't know that Jimmy is very much in love with her. He's never told her. So he kind of uh, very sadly loves her from afar, and he would do anything in the world for her. But she likes the guy a lot. They're very, very good friends, and she wants to stay with the group. But during one of their engagements, they cross paths with uh, a, another up-and-coming young uh, dancer named Harry Palmer, played by Gene Kelly, who is uh, arrogant um, full of himself, sort of like Gene Kelly in real life. He's perfect for the part. And at first, Joe can't stand the guy, but then her feelings start to change, and she becomes very attracted to him. And he asks her to leave her two friends, her, her two co-workers, and start an act with him. And at first, she's very reluctant to do it, but when Jimmy finds out that that it's something she wants very badly. He encourages her to leave, even though it's difficult for him to uh, let her go. So she and Harry go off, and they start having a certain amount of success. And she falls madly in love with the guy. And it's kind of she's playing the situation in the same way that Jimmy was playing it for her. She's loving Harry without him knowing how she feels, and uh, she, he, she's never told him. But eventually, as things goes on, he falls in love with her as well. And they, they decide they want to get married, but not until they've played the Palace Theater in New York, which is the epitome of success for people in vaudeville. So 
as the story goes on, right when they get a chance to play the palace, Harry gets drafted into the army for World War I. So that's all I'm going to tell you. It gets very dramatic after that. This is not a musical comedy. It's very, very serious and very sad in a lot of parts, which is perfect when you have Judy Garland because there's nobody in films who can bring you to tears like Judy Garland, with the exception possibly of Margaret O'Brien. <laughs> but it's, it's a great movie. Uh, Judy Garland was not only uh, an expert singer and dancer, she really, she dances every bit as well as George Murphy and Gene Kelly. In this film she keeps up with him beautifully just as years later she would keep up with Fred Astaire she's she's a great dancer but not only is she a great musical performer but she is a great dramatic actress and they gave her a real chance here and it's interesting that she did not like Busby Berkeley the director they, they didn't they had a lot of clashes and she made no secret of the fact that she didn't like the guy but uh, he managed to get a great performance out of her maybe maybe in spite of the fact that uh, they had this uh, you know, bad blood between them. Maybe that's what made her so good. I don't know, so good in the film. But Gene Kelly, of course, in his first film, he um, always credited Judy Garland with being a great help to him and showing him what he was supposed to do, how to hit the marks and all that sort of thing, and giving him advice. And he uh, he was very indebted to her. And they worked together a couple of other times after this. And uh, they, they liked each other very much. They were good friends. And it's interesting because I read that before they brought Gene Kelly into this film, George Murphy was supposed to play that particular part. And they so they replaced uh, Kelly uh, in Murphy's part. And Murphy's part was kind of cut down and shortened. So not a good thing for George Murphy. But I, I don't know how he felt about that situation. I, hope, I have a feeling he was probably a good sport. But I really don't know. So you have all these wonderful old songs. And you also have, um, let's see, what else do we have? Okay, I was, I was going to mention that, um, so Judy Garland had actually been in show business since the age of two, and she had grown up in vaudeville, singing with her, her two sisters, uh, the Gum Sisters. Later on, they were called the Garland Sisters when they all changed their names. And, of course, the act broke up in 1935. She was signed by MGM at the age of 13. And she was a great success, of course, at MGM up until 1950 when her contract was canceled under rather unhappy circumstances because she was having a lot of uh, personal problems then. But she made a great comeback the following year. Uh, she decided to go back in, a, as a concert singer. She couldn't get any film work, so she started out at the London Palladium in 1951 and then later went on to the Palace Theatre. So it's kind of... It's kind of um, Part of the Judy Garland legend that uh, this great vaudeville performer as a child finally ended up sort of being a, a triumphant star at the Palace Theater, and she set a record, which I think I don't know I don't know if it's still a record, but it was for a long time. She played for 19 weeks in 1951, and it was just a smash hit. And then she went back again in 1958, so it's just. Uh, kind of full circle for a great star. So that's my film for 1942. I think I talked about everything I wanted to mention for me and my gal. And I have to say that after I watched this last week, I found myself walking around the house singing, uh, the bells are ringing for, and all that sort of thing. And that was followed by uh, singing After You've Gone. And then uh, <clears throat> I stepped out of the shower today and I was singing um, Ball in the Jack. So. If I start walking around the neighborhood singing, it's a long way to Tipperary. I know it's time to get professional help. But that's what these musicals do to me. They make me want to sing, even though I can't. So, <clears throat> all right. Thanks for watching. Comments are welcome.